Hello everyone. Hello, hello. Happy spring and um, happy gardens. Today is Garden Talk. I hope you live in the uh, hemisphere where it's still spring so we can chat about a garden and how to create one and what are the important things to consider and not only that um, there are some rules and things that needs to be put in place before you have an harmonious garden now as an interior designer I don't only love interiors I love exteriors because they are the most beautiful things that people see before they get to your home and uh, it is so beautiful in the spring or summer when you open the windows and uh, see the outside open the curtains and let the wind flow and you smell the aroma of the flowers and but what you see from the outside you can have it inside because once you open the, the windows and doors are open you can enjoy all that beauty that um, you might want to put together in a nice garden okay so this this uh there is harmony in uh, in creating um a garden and there is a way to do it most people like um a structured garden or um well manicured some other people like um, um a free flowing garden or a more natural uh, look or low maintenance um, many people uh, people like different types of gardens it is uh, very important th that before we get to the house to the entry landing we have clear defined paths and uh, we have good lighting and we have something to smell, some good aroma and some good flower therapy before we get to the house. So as I said, a well-designed garden has different rules, a few rules that we need to know so we can get a, a good garden design. And these are, first of all, element of architecture or and then uh, we can have we can think of texture we can think of colors and forms and um, and uh, the design of the pathway now bear with me i need to move some buttons okay let's see if i can do it let's move some buttons here all right okay well I don't think I can move any buttons today let's, let's try um, no I can't try any buttons anyway let's talk about so this is Valentina Chirasola and uh, you are watching Valentina Design Universe so the talk about garden it's colorful and um, it has to be natural I like vignettes vignettes means that as you turn the corners you can see different things and admire different different things so let's see just one second where is my agenda nowhere okay pardon about that it's not my fault okay so plants do enhance the the garden they need to be put in certain in certain almost structure but not much just think that the tallest plant will go in the back whatever the back is like it be 
against the fence. That's the back part. I mean, that's the the parts that I dis distinguish as the back. Or can be against the wall. That is the back of all the flowers. So the tallest go in the back, in the very back. And then the medium, the smaller, and then the ground cover. Okay. Now, it's important to study the rotation of the sun around the house because certain plants only need or only want full sun and some of the plants only want shadows. So you have to know how the sun rotates around your home. Um, so when we... Um, we do that when we choose the style of the uh, of the garden then we can consider for instance um the low maintenance low maintenance xeriscapes that means that the plants that go into xeriscape you know today is very important to conserve water because at one point it will become a very expensive uh, commodity. So it is important to uh, save, to conserve the water. That's why the Xeriscape don't want much maintenance, don't want much light, uh, much water, and not much of anything. Just, you know, take the weeds out and uh, give them some water and sink to it. So that's why we need the low maintenance. Also, you know, it's uh, it's really, it's really up to you. I do, I do like a garden that is flavorful in in the sense that makes a lot of flowers and this and that and smells, but not much of maintenance. So in order to change scenes, you can also use containers. Containers in potted plants that you can move them around and um, create different scenes. Now, can we ever do any things without colors? I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Um, for instance, have you noticed when you drive on freeways and highways, have you noticed the changes of colors in the trees? So, that is not a just made there by chance. They didn't grow on their own. They were planted like that in a, a, a light tree, a darker tree, a medium color, uh, and then they go from a yellow tree, uh, a red tree, a brown tree, a green tree. It, they all have a reason for on, on, I'm talking about along the freeways and highways because it keeps not only the interesting, interesting view, but the uh, drivers uh, stay a little more awake by looking at the changes of colors. Okay, some people have people in the car or music, but those who drive alone, they will. Uh, it's it's it's, uh, it's subconsciously they will look at the trees and they will stay a little more awake than usual than than if they would have a boring view. Okay. The same thing is for the garden. It's the very same um, concept. The color scheme can be made from light to dark from soft to bold colors, from cool to warm colors on the palettes of the colors, of the color wheels, because that way, not only the, the value of the house goes up, but it keeps uh, the eyes attentive and, and keeps um, a good, good harmony. As I said before, the first thing people see when they see your home is the garden. So that's where you should put a good effort in, make it, in making it look 
beautiful, um, personalized to your needs, and um, if you can, expensive. It doesn't have to be expensive. I want to show you something. Let's see if this works. Okay, it works. Okay. And okay, so this is, um, I take inspiration from many different places. This is a nearby a shopping center, but you can do the same in your home. You see what they've done here? They bunched up uh, planters and inside the planters there are tall plants and smaller plants, shorter plants. So you have a, um, a dynamic effect. You have the height and the low part and it's all very colorful if you see it. It's made, the planters are colorfully made with uh, ceramic mosaics and um, they add a lot of interest so now let's look at this one for instance let's see if i can do this yes of course i can and um, this is an architectural feature it's um, a capital it's uh, made for gardens actually and you can have on top a small plant like you see it here but you can have also a bigger plant or you can have this at the entry of a pathway. You have two of the same type. Okay, why am I saying this? Okay, now we see all me. And you're watching again Valentina Design Universe. I am Valentina. So why am I saying that you need to, you can put this uh, capital at the beginning of your pathway. Because if you're looking at the style of the garden, you have to somehow come up with a style. And uh, you can have a classic style, you can have a, um, a free form style, you can have a French garden, a Japanese garden, but basically what you do, you don't uh, mix the styles. You choose one and you stay with that and you build on it you built on that style. Let's say if you want a classic style garden, without being too manicured, you can have a classic style. But um, it, what's important in the classic style is the symmetry. Now, if you ever ever been in Europe, you probably have noticed the buildings, European buildings have symmetry. Uh, because they are built in the classic style architecture. So you might see a, a row of window with triangle pediments, and then the next row you see arched window, and then again another row with a uh, triangle pediment at the top. And then you go down with your uh, eyes and you see two columns of the same height and the same color and the same size, marking or framing the entry of the building. The same thing is with is done with the garden in the classic style. The same, same thing. So the position of the plants and the, um, the way the plants are cut uh, will give you the, the, um, the symmetry of the garden. So let's say you have two round, a uh, one round bush. You can put one on one corner and another round bush on another corner, or maybe you have uh, a tall uh, hanging tree. Then you can have one in the center to attract attention because it's hanging and falling down. And underneath you can have shorter plants. So. Um, in the classic uh, style of garden, usually, now look at this picture, I love this picture. Usually there is a center part that is round with seatings around and potted plants around or uh, flower beds all around the circle. And in the middle, there is a water source. The water source can be a fountain, 
uh, it can be, let me see if I hide this. Yes, you can see the rest of the picture. Um, you can see a fa um, in the center, you can have a, a fountain. You might see a small pond with, um, with uh, fish and you might have um, a small pool. And the small pool in the uh, classic style might be uh, done with a cascade or might be done with um, a unusual shape, not square or rectangular. It's unusual shape, something, an S form, okay? So now, um, and the reason for that, you know, it, to have the center part, uh, the center part being round is so you can feel embraced in the garden and feel in harmony with with the nature. All right, so what else do we have? A free form. A free form garden can be anything really that you like, anything. You can have a, um, a garden bed, you can have a whimsical uh, mailbox, or you can have um, uh, plants that are not matching, but they are, they go well with colors. The color combination is very nice. Or you can have whimsical metal uh, sculpture or fairies scattered around, the little statues. And that's a kind of a free form. But basically, you know, don't mix the style. If you have a Japanese garden, you might want to stay with a Japanese element, a little bridge, uh, some lanterns made of uh, rock, I mean, uh, concrete or um, rocks, maybe a Buddha, uh, maybe an altar, and things of that sort. So don't mix the styles, but any style will be good for you. Then another thing you should do is plant an orchard. You know, nowadays food is corrupted. It's sprayed with a lot of chemicals and even vegetables. When we think we're eating organic, we might not really be eating organic. So what I'm saying is try to find the food that will grow in your uh, ground. Uh, select a spot in your garden where you can grow the food you like, at least some of them and plan again the same thing as you do with the flowers, you do with an orchard. For instance, you can color blocking your vegetables. Romaine salad comes in red colors and green colors, so they look good together. Cauliflower, they come in purple and white, and they look good together. Corn, corn you can have the yellow corn, or the Indian corns, you know, those are multicolors. They look so well together. And then you can have structure I for height, and uh, you can have things against the wall growing in verticals. So you have the uh, corn, for instance, structure, and then you have the tomatoes against the wall in a vertical garden, and then you might have the lower ground. So you have the height, and the, it is a rhythm. Okay, and then you have the ground, all the vegetable, all the salads and zucchini make so many beautiful flowers. They are very expensive if you find them in stores, and they're so good. And when you grow them yourself, believe me, they are. They, you become rich by eating like zucchini flower. Really, you become rich. So. Then another thing is lighting. Lighting nowadays is perfect for gardens. There are so many LED um, well, solar panel lighting. They're so not that expensive and so beautiful. 
So you should get some of that for the entry landing should well should be well illuminated because that's your uh, business card really. It's your entry landing, and then you should like if you have bushes against the windows, you should like the bushes behind so no one can get behind the bushes and get in your windows. And then the pathway should be illuminated enough so you can walk through and and not trip on any stones or anything so this is i can talk about for a long long time about gardens because there is so much to say so much just like there is so much to say about interiors but one thing at a time one little step at a time and um what else can i say maybe next time I can talk to you about about the uh, uh, garden for the fall. Who knows? Maybe I can do that and prepare your garden for the autumn and the colder season of, win of uh, winter. For right now, I will just say it was a pleasure for you to watch the show and have you here. Um, I hope this information was uh, good for you. We have um, been together for a while, so it's about time I stop for right now. So this was Garden Talk, and I am Valentina Cirasola. I'm a designer, and my website is www.valentinadesigns.com, and you just watched Valentina Design Universe. If you watch it live, please say it. If you watch a replay, just hashtag replay and I'll get you an answer back. Okay, if you have questions, please put it in a, in a comment and I will respond to you. Okay, thank you for watching. Have a nice spring and um, thank you for being here. Bye, ciao.